Well, good uh, afternoon. It's uh, Tales from Wales and the view behind me is getting a bit too familiar. But no, we're absolutely loving it down here. And I say we because over in the other corner, back on the soil shed is Ethan. I'm back down on peg number two. Um, but yeah, dead, dead happy to be back down. Actually down for a 48 hour session this time. So hopefully, you know, who knows, maybe some more fish, but any fish I will quite happily take, to be honest with you. Um, as you can see behind, uh, the wind pushing gently into my face here. So Ethan has been down for a couple of days before. Uh, he's been pretty unfortunate, to be honest. He's moved. I think he's on his fifth move back into the soil. So he started there, went across, round the, basically round the whole Birmingham Lake. Um, but luckily, as I said, the effort equals reward, and he's actually had a fish, um, quickly followed by another fish. So as I said, we don't know whether we're going to mix the blogs or not, but as I said, to see him catch the fish is phenomenal. I said, I actually booked a peg too. I haven't ever booked a peg down here before, just come and have a go. But the conditions have really, really prompted the fact that there should be fish in here. Uh, I'm blogging a bit later than I usually was. I'm normally down here about 8 o'clock in the morning, which I was. But unfortunately, there was a person already in the swim. Uh, and as you said, you can't actually take up a buck swim until 12 o'clock. So I had to walk around and say, we've actually got Mark Wozencroft, um, very classically well-known Welsh angler. Uh, he's around on the other side of the island and he's flying, I think he's on about six, seven fish now. So hopefully get him on camera, maybe even with a fish. So I said, brilliant. But yeah, just happy to be da back down in the White Springs complex. In a swim that I know, so I know some spots that did me fish last week. I say, yeah, again, because I'm fishing every week, I'm sort of building up the knowledge of the areas um, and establishing the food source of the bait, which is brilliant to be able to do as opposed to traveling all around the country and trying to pick a bite here and there. So as I said, we'll go through, hopefully now I said uh, from last blog, I might learn how to use a GoPro properly. Um, we might have some more special shots, who knows. But uh, fingers crossed, I got the old hinge stiff rigs out. You know, I'm trusting them so, so much now. The Vardis hooks nailing them miles and miles back. They're taking really confidently fish, they're screaming off. Um, combinations of different baits, uh, Innovate Brunana Armas being most popular, topped off with the Evolution, whether it be the corn or the maggot balls. I said, they're working for me. I, I've got no reason to change them. I said, I'm very lucky, as I said last week, that the stuff I'm using is absolutely working for me. So, as the day draws on now, I say, it's, what was it, about, one o'clock now, half past one. We'll just see what happens. And I say, I'm just happy to be out fishing, as you all well know. So, uh, catch you later. And say, maybe with or maybe without a fish, but who cares? We'll certainly show you some bits and pieces. Using a new camera, really, really high definition. So, hopefully, you can catch how perfect all of the weather conditions are as it trickles in behind me. So, catch you later. There we are. Uh, after what seemed about ages to wait to get into the swim that I booked up. Uh, five, ten minutes after the rod goes out, ten yards off the bank, absolutely fuzzes away. 23 pounds, just over, a little tickle over, but we'll call it 23. Um, yet again, it's the uh, hinge stiff rig, banana armor pop up, topped off with a little bit of maggot. What an absolute devastating combination that's proven to be so far. This, the, uh, this sort of winter come spring, summer, whatever the hell it is at the moment down here. The weather doesn't know what the heck it's doing, but absolutely buzzing. And what makes it more beautiful is finally, after six weeks, I think, of trying Ethan sat behind the camera, we finally got a fish each on camera. So dead, dead chuffed. And goes over the 20 pound mark. So I said my fair, my sort of monthly 20s challenge so far, dead, dead chuffed. And she sat beautifully calm. To be honest, I thought it might have been a little bit bigger when it peeled off. Uh, give me a good kick in, but I'm absolutely, as you can tell, buzzing. Um, team catch and release on the banks, all weathers, all styles. Loving it. Catch you later. Oh. Well, absolutely dead chuffed, as I say. <laughs> the twist of the story is the poor geezer that I jumped in behind because I put the swim is sat watching Ethan's rods as Ethan's had to come around to do the filming for me. But it just goes to prove the incredible pulling power of a really solid bait. Two days in here, on the same spot I'm fishing, uh, seeing fish still, um, but nothing happening. So, I say 20, it's only about half an hour, top ends, that, that rod's been out. And it's beep, beep, don't locked out yet again, hooked around, picked it up. Really gave me a tearing around. But uh, the best thing about what we get to do with these beautiful creatures is obviously get them back into their watery home. So, uh, 
Unfortunately, I've got an absolute pickle where it picked up both of my lines. Even though it's pat leaded, it tore me up on the bottom. Good kick in, but I don't mind. It's still like I've still got time to set it all back up. But yeah, the uh, yeah, again that crazy combination—the banana arm, the pop-up, bright yellow, really vivid yellow, fished over the cream crunch, and just that maggot topper. I really think it's making it so hard for them to eject that. Um, but yeah, I'm dead, dead chuffed. So uh, let's get it back. There we are. Well, don't say it, Team Catch, or at least we don't bring you uh, the Welsh Wizards, the Welsh Stars, or any stars at all. So we've been lucky enough uh, to bump into Mark Walsencroft, uh, as a well-known Welsh angler, so we're dead sure to meet him finally after he's done some stuff at the site for us. Um, and I've just been called around for a bit of mobile camera crew for a cracking uh, little le uh, lever. So take it away, Mark. Give us a little quick chat, mate. OK, well, I've done a 48-hour session down here. Um, I've done quite well. I've had, uh, well, it's my eighth run now, caught five. Afraid I lost three of them in snags, but you know, that's the way it goes. Um, biggest one I've had is 23 pounds, but size is irrelevant, really, to be honest, because when the fish look like this, which is, uh, I haven't weighed it to be honest, but I'd say it's one about 18, 19 pound leather. Uh, I'll try and lift it up before he goes nuts. <laughs> but, um, the first time I've been down here for a while. You can see it when you get catching fish like this, Dan. It's all right, isn't it? What a beauty! And it's a, one of the tiniest scales there in the world, but we're calling her a full level. What an absolute minter! And I said the smile says it all. Really, it said no matter how many years you've been doing it, in Mark, there's still a tremendous thing when you go over the cord, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oops. At the end of the day. It's all about catching, and that's all it is. We come out for a bit of enjoyment, get on the bank, hopefully learn some bits and pieces as well along the way. And, and to be honest, I, I, I do, you know, whoever comes up to me and I want to send any advice or whatever, it doesn't matter if I'm fishing or I'm not fishing, then, you know, we're all here to help each other, and that's what it's all about. And that's why I'm quite happy to do a bit of filming for yourself, for you guys. There we are, absolutely fantastic. We'll see if we get some stills of this and uh, let it back, get back and you can get back to home, mate. <laughs> Top notch. Cheers, Mark. As I said very quickly, just want to go through not so much how to tie a rig because you know people are bored of watching people tying rigs, but sort of the how I've got the rig set up, if you like. So I'm not going to go through step by step, but just show you some little different bits and pieces that I've got on the rig. So I said the hinge diff rig, there she goes. Uh, the old maggot cluster topped pop up. It's what I've had so many of the fish on out of here recently. Uh, dead day confident. I think whether or not they can't eject it or it's the visual appeal as we saw the pink in the sort of clear water is absolutely vital. It really does show up. But I'm going to say what I got there. I'm trying to show you there we are. So, chod hook whipped onto the back. Little teardrop shaped um, rig ring. The reason I use them is I can push the point into the bait ever so gently, uh, but it still gets loads and loads of movement and still got oh, quite a bit of twist in it as well because of the way that it sits. Then I say, where a lot of people try to tie this section directly to the swivel, what I've actually done is created a loop. Let that focus on. There we are. And that loop's created just by simply doing an overhand figure of eight knot uh, and then pulling it, the swivel through it. What that creates is, yet yeah, again, you can see with the same tie down here on the boom section, loads and loads of freedom and movement and it doesn't actually hinder that swivel from moving. So if the fish comes in from any angle, it can suck and flip into the mouth. Um, what is great as well, and that's more probably by luck than judgment, is these uh, slightly larger ring swivels actually perfectly counterbalance this setup. So I don't have to have this need for any shot. It sinks dead, dead slowly and rests. And if you just waft the water next to it, it's got enough to hold in the waft of the water 
but anything more than that it will actually move and turn and you can see how free that hook spins and swivels it will go in any way now as I said loads of people are doing it I'm not telling you that I've invented this or whatever but obviously what I've got here is A I've got the loop but I've got a soft coated braid slightly stiffer um, soft coated if that makes sense it's not a really really supple one so it's still going to get that boom effect away from the lead but obviously it's going to uh, take up any of the contours of the lake but also you know it's a nice colour see if you can see the flex of the colour there um, it's the Valis downfall stuff uh, so it sinks like an absolute brick, booms away nicely and as you saw in last week's blog the bottom is a really really sort of twisted up colour, it's all quite light, just chippings in there and things so that really does set off against that so I'm going to say I'm not going to show you how to tie them but just those are the little bits and pieces that I use to make my hinge stiffies and I said for me the most important is raise a sharp hook um, and cast it to the right spot basically you know you can't catch fish on blunt hooks really um, and, and that's about it really so yeah tied onto the dead clip system and off to go so it's done me loads of loads of uh, loads of loads of confidence really should I say I don't want to say loads of loads of bites because I've had loads of loads of bites and then say so how I'm fishing it there we go over a scattering of crumbed up baits uh, and some of the feed pellets that they use here down the white springs so that lays nice and gently popped up really really high because of the fact I don't want them to be grubbing deep into the ground to get onto all this bait, otherwise they pick all this up and ignore that. So I want that to be really in your face, so as they come along the baited area, boom, they're onto the fish, uh, they're onto the uh, pop-up. So, there's the spot. There we move across just there. I've actually got the GoPro in situ there, I've had it filming for an hour now. So, um, I shall see what happens, what comes of it, if anything does show up. But uh, fingers crossed for another one. Still got another afternoon and a night. Have a bit of a social with Ethan for an hour or two later on because uh, he's done a couple of days down here uh, in solitude. So uh, keep you up to date. Cheers. up this morning after last night's results I had a 30 pounder really happy with that but obviously it was a bit dark to do the old video shots but this one is a bit is, a, is another nice one 23 and a half pound lovely dark fish um, we have perfect weather we've had perfect weather for the last couple of days so to be honest this is uh, it's not really unexpected I know the uh, the cameraman has had a couple as well so he's happy Ethan's happy, so the whole team is, uh, is over the moon. I mean, uh, really kicked off, and uh, uh, yeah, everything's uh, just falling into place now, right? Do you know what I mean? And what makes it even better, nobody else is catching. <laughs> happy days. Here you go. There we are, Matt. We'll uh, take some steals and slip it back. Look at that smile, ladies and gentlemen. That sells it for everyone. Carp fishing rules. Excellent. Catch and release. <laughs> from Wales, just getting that rod back out after that fish, awesome, awesome result for him, he's on a roll as well at the moment, uh, the poor lad that was in the swim for 48 hours before him, couldn't believe it as that rod peeled off, he was on the cup of tea with me, and um, yeah, the rod that he was fishing in exactly the same spot, just peeled away, 20 sweet bone mirror, is it something to do with the bait? Or is he really that good? Well, I don't even see that, but Mr. Moon is still in the sky. Mr. Carp is in the net. Uh, don't think it's going to make 20, but yet again, off that little spot. I just, just off the bank, as I say, I'm like, it's like 15 yards down. But we've seen fish in there, 
and say they hadn't been adding it for 48 hours. I've been putting in the pellet that gets fed in you as a little sort of edge for myself, plus crumbed up bit, um, steam easy innovate cream crunches you know I'm just doing so well on them and dead dead chuffed and yet again it's the uh, banana rama pop-up with a little maggot ball on top so we're gonna get her out get her weighed uh, get some video and get some pictures so I'll catch back to you but after a ridiculous night again look at that it just looks so feels so carpy here all the time and that is why you come because so, I had the fish about half an hour ago I actually managed to watch, look at that, the sun rise over the top of the, the Welsh Valleys. What a gem, White Springs, happy days. Get back to you in a bit. There we are, early morning rewards. As we said, the moon was still in the sky, 26 and a half pounds. I never honestly would have thought in a million years that this would have gone mid-twenties, but I am dead, dead chuffed off that tiny little spot. Just so I'm trying to put it down because he's bending my arms. Um, it says still not quite the 30, but by God, for a spot that is literally 10 yards down the bank, two yards off the bank, uh, I'm just so pleased to say I've been feeding that pellet, as I said, um, and uh, let's just get the other side of it. I've been feeding that pellet, as I said, uh, with a crumbed up uh, KK, and uh, the proof is in the pudding because she's papping it out everywhere. And there she goes, 26 and a half pounds, solid lump, uh, you know, as you can tell by my voice, I am dead, dead, dead chuffed, um, really, really happy, can't help but, you know, be, be happy, with say, 48 hours of blank in the same spots and two fish off the spots, um, I'm going to have to send the picture to Lee, unfortunately, so I don't think he's going to be too happy with me, but uh, I'm over the bloody moon, I don't care. The weather has been horrific again all last night. Um, Ethan has said now he's going to recast the rods, get them back on the spots because they do love a recast year. I've just rebaited and uh, get this baby back and get on with it and have a cup of tea, I think, a nice cup of tea. And uh, Necco nominate that, Ethan. So happy days, Team Catch and Release on the bank. to day two and I say you can see happy with uh, what I've had in the net so it's two twenties I say it's literally I keep saying it's just around there but it is amazing to think as I say I've been in with the GoPro it's like two three foot of water dead dead clear you saw the rigs in the last blog how they present the uh, pop-up uh, hinge stiff rigs solid I mean the hook holds are miles miles back um, dead dead chuff with it's a building confidence with the new rig because as you well know I was such a big fan of the combi rigs and how they worked on the bottom not saying the bottom rigs don't work here obviously not I say Mark Wozenkoff's had a couple of his fish if not all of them I believe on the uh, bottom but here it seems to be because of as you saw in the last blog how the sort of you got the root systems and the weed um, holding points how they've actually come up and I said I actually landed what I felt with a donk earlier, just reeled in to uh, reset the rigs and I was actually tethered around a tree. So all these people that say, yep, yeah, I'm on gravel, I'm on uh, silt and all this lot. If you feel that donk, don't be fooled. You're not always on what you think you are. I said it was exactly the same spot as I've had the two fish from on a recast clipped up. 
but evidently there is still some bits of possibly with the wind blowing them down and on the on the wind but it was about sort of two foot length really uh, tree uh, tree cut off so I mean it can happen guys I said don't think because you feel that donk you perfectly on something at the bottom it might be something completely different it didn't give me any different feedback uh, on the rod tip than than the actual spot has but yeah, luckily, as I said, I'm down for a 48, so I've got another day and a night to go. We are going to nip up the shops later to uh, replenish because Ethan's eating himself out of house or home. I'm going to give the swimmer rest, you know, a classic tactic. Because of the fact that I've been dumping bait in and putting it out on spots, I know that if they are in there, before we leave, we'll chuck another few baits out as well. So if they are there, then they can come back onto the spots over the night. Sat up next to the rods, the bivvy's dead close after last night where it's blowing a gale, I've actually pulled the door off and everything, so it doesn't come without disasters unfortunately, but um, yeah, it's been really, really good, so I'll have him mark on the blog as well, he's had a fantastic run, eight fish, a 30, three or four 20s, and a couple of doubles as well, so I mean, it just goes to prove that good anglers ha don't just have uh, good luck, they are bloody good anglers as well, but it's been a real pleasure to meet the man, the sort of He's done a lot for the site for us, and he's always been a big fan of catch and release, so it's really, really nice to get on the bank with him. Uh, so, yeah, Rod's back out after going around to film for that last fish you've just seen from Mark. Um, got them all about on spots. I've actually moved the middle rod. Where the island slope I was showing you before in last week's blog, I've actually moved a wrong, long, closer to some snaggy areas, tightened the clutch up on it again just to see if they're holding under the snags and then just drifting out off the island as opposed to around and away from the island. But yeah, so we'll catch up later. So I will do another bit and pieces here. I will just show you quickly later on uh, my setup with the hinge stiff rig. It's nothing different massively, apart from the way that I create some different loops on there. But yeah, dead, dead chuffed. I say, I'm, I'm fall, I've fallen in love with the place. Uh, I say I'm not going to kid myself, we are here for some of the big girls that do reside the 30s and indeed the Welsh 40s. But bending the rods is all I'm after really to be honest, I'm just happy to come down here and uh, meet some great people as well. I say they've really been uh, looking after us down here at White Springs, uh, some fantastic uh, people. And I say they're doing a lot of work on the complex as well uh, with regards sort of removing underwater snags without getting rid of the carp's natural habitat but sort of making it more safe for the fish because that's what it's all about guys is fish safety so uh, I'm going to retire to the, to the bivvy because it is as you can see blowing an absolute hoodie but I hate blogging inside the bivvy the old bare green background is a bit boring but uh, yeah Rod's back out the mark for at least a couple of hours now before we have to nip up the shops and uh, we'll get back to you later on here we are Early morning wake up call, uh, 16 pound, not uh, not the giant, but really, really good. So I really felt unconfident last night going into the last night. Move spots um, and sort of kept the bait the same, but moved some spots because they hadn't produced in the night before. But uh, yeah, sort of, I think it's 8 o'clock, about an hour before I got to go, to be honest, as well. Off she goes. Oh, she's an angry one. But I said, give me a second picked up and went straight for the snags, do exactly where she was going, under a mile an hour. Um, but I said, because of the fact that one could be a lump, you've got to play them very sensitively, you've got to be careful with them. There she is, 16 pound, uh, dead, dead angry, didn't want to come in at all whatsoever. Picked up another line, but I managed to sort that out quite quickly. So dead, dead chuffed, uh, get some steals, get her back. One hour left to go, who knows, a big girl might still grace the net. Team catch and release. Well, <coughs> as I said, nice early morning wake up call. Um, dead, dead chuffed again. I keep saying dead, dead chuffed. It's really annoying, but I am. Uh, as I said, a slightly longer session, 48 hours with the same results, really, fishing the net. So, really, really happy. Um, but this is what we do now, catch and release. I say, is we've got to pack up and get on to work. Both me and Ethan are both working now, so it's pack up and uh, off to go. But yeah, White Springs, doing it again. We said, not out next week. I've actually got an admin week next week with a lot of stuff to sort out for the website, etc, etc. So uh, this view will be the last you'll see for a week from me, at least. But um, yeah, two 20s and a 16 pounder. Um, you know, the bait's working, the rigs are working. The spots, as I said, there's a change of spot, as I said earlier, for that uh, last fish, because of the other two spots did not produce in the first 24 hours. 
So it's nice to know that I've now found another area where fish might be coming in early morning. So I've got another 40 minutes, half, uh, 40 minutes an hour before I've got to be sort of rolling. So you never know, maybe one more for camera. But if not, yet again, really good session. Big thanks to everyone down White Springs. have been really good for us as well. Been really, really helpful. And great to get back on the bank with the man, Ethan. So, uh, yeah. And obviously with Mark Wazzy Croft as well. Really good to see him and finally meet him. So, uh, catch you later. Double thumbs up. Team catch and release. Thank you.